Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is a Piazza Talk, a channel about our life in Lucca. And in the Tuscan Hills. Please hit the subscribe button. Grazie. Ciao a tutti. Today we're going to have a very interesting video and I ask you to be to stay with us until the end of it because we got to look at a very important issue. Pasta, specifically dry pasta. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about pasta, how to choose pasta, how to buy it, not how to cook it, there will be the, another video. And you follow me until the end, you'll be an expert on this subject because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about pasta. First thing, how pasta is made, there are just two ingredients water and wheat, specifically semolina. To make pasta in Italy, by law, uh, we have to use uh, semolina, which is made with durum wheat. And durum wheat is uh, a specific wheat that is particularly good for making pasta and holds the cooking and it's different from common wheat, also called uh, in Italy called soft wheat. And that wheat is for uh, bread, for fresh pasta. And fresh pasta has been uh, a video in the future that we're planning. And uh, uh, for other purposes there. But for pasta, you need durum wheat. And now I'll show you the difference between uh, semolina and uh, double zero flour from soft wheat. Okay, this is the semolina. It is coarser, it's yellower. And this is the semola, or semolina, we call it semolina in Italian, normal semola. Then you can uh, remill the semola and you get semola rimacinata that is used for different purposes there. And this is the normal flour. In this specific case, it's a double zero, the flour used for the fresh pasta and we used to make bread and uh, other things. Once we have these two ingredients, semolina and water, they get mixed in machines into a dough, and this dough is drawn through certain little things called uh, dye, and uh, the kind of molds, and it's pushed through these molds and it's drawn, and you get the shape at the other end. Now, the traditional way to do these things is using a bronze dye. Uh, bronze dye gives a specific um, surface to the pasta, but the things now they use uh, also um, Teflon coated dyes. And this is very interesting because the pasta, yes, uh, it is quicker to prepare and has got a lower price, but certain recipes require pasta made with a um, non-traditional dye, and I'll tell you in a minute. When you use a bronze dye, the surface of the pasta is porous, and uh, even the, the consistency is different. It's probably less pressed. There's something that makes specific if you do if you use a, a bronze dye. And uh, uh, bronze dye got also one other problem, that they actually were much faster than uh, other dyes there. So that's uh, the pasta has got uh, a higher cost for that. The other dyes coated with modern Teflon, you got a smoother surface and it's much easier to produce. But this smoother surface is actually interesting. It's been now used by some good chefs to make, for instance, a pasta with clams, because you want a slippery uh, contrast between the sauce and the surface of the pasta. So if you use pasta that's made with bronze dyes, we have uh, an interesting surface, which is uh, porous, and uh, in some ways it clings to the, the sauce, clings to the pasta better. If you use more modern dyes, uh, you've got a shiny, um, um, smooth surface and the pasta and the sauce uh, uh, clings less uh, efficiently with that. 
Now, in order to do that, in order to make the sauce cling into the pasta, uh, some manufacturer they introduced, and has become almost universal now, uh, rugged pasta, rigata. For instance, one example is this one. They create to make the sauce cling to the pasta. Uh, top chefs, they reject this idea, and they still stick to traditional pasta that has to be lisha. And this is an example of, uh, this is traditional pasta, bronze dye. You can see the surface is pearls. Then the next thing is that the pasta needs to be dried. And the longer the drying process, the longer the better. It also means that if you dry pasta at a lower temperature, you need more time and the pasta is much better. So you need to check on the package if they say in Italian lunga essiccatura, that means a long drying time. And this long drying time, sometimes it's also stated on the package. For instance, this is a very good pasta. And they say 18 hours. Now, pasta can be dried as a fashion up to 36 hours, but this is also already a good uh, time. Also because if you dry the pasta with uh, um, higher temperature, and obviously a shorter period, so it's less good. So you need the pasta, long drying time, that in, uh, and the low temperature. This is the most important thing. Another thing, now the pasta is made in a very protected environment, but in the past, pasta was actually dried outside, and there is a, a town outside Naples, which is one of the major uh, places, I mean, where they make high quality pasta, it's called the Gragnano. And part of this town was built, taking into account the direction of the prevalent winds. And so the main street of this place was uh, um, designed in the way that the wind, a certain time of the day, was uh, statistically blowing a certain direction along the street. And so the pasta makers were on the side of the street and they were hanging the pasta and uh, incidentally, uh, there is also a movie by Sofia Loren called the Francesca e Nunziata that is about uh, a woman who inherited, I think, a uh, pasta factory. We've been to the, to the shop, to the store, and uh, we have bought some pasta, but also we have a lot of pasta in the cupboard. And I prepare here a selection of uh, pastas, and I can show you how to buy pasta, what to look for, the small print and now to read them in a packet of pasta that's the most important thing okay first thing we got is pasta here pasta de cecco is uh, very good it's made in abruzzo and uh, it's dry for long time 18 hours uh, i found that the pasta de cecco is uh, available in many countries outside uh, italy the small print here and they say Proteine, 14%. So this is a very high level of protein. It's very important that you choose a pasta with the high level of protein. So that means it has to be at least 13 and a half. But 14 is what we normally find here. And they also say acqua fredda di montagna, cold water from the mountains. So water is a very important part of uh, pasta making. This is another uh, brand, Voyello, it's an historical brand as well, from another place in your neighbors called the Torre Annunziata, where they make uh, traditionally high quality pasta. And you can see that it looks so wonderful, it's rugged and beautifully made. Again, we got the back here, and the protein says 14%. Now, this is interesting pasta because they say the wheat is 100% Italian and they use this wheat called Aureo. And now I want to talk about this pasta, Molisana, that also uh, I like this very, very much. It is made in Molise, which is uh, a region uh, in the south of Italy, when the food is uh, extremely good. So again, it's 14% uh, protein, so it is very good. 
and just turning over the package. Okay, they use Italian wheat and trafilato bronze, bronze, and also they say here decorticato a pietra. That means that the when the wheat is milled, uh, they remove the the external bit of the wheat, the husk of the with the stones and this is a superior pasta we like it very much this is a pasta garofa this is pasta from uh, gragnano and it is very interesting because they give you some interesting information at the back because they say where the, the wheat is coming from and wheat is coming from italy and uh, australia but they tell you why Australia, because it's interesting something they say here. They get wheat from warm places, which is supposed to be better for the pasta. And uh, so they say this package, this brand here, they use wheat from uh, Australia, Italy and Arizona. I didn't know in Arizona there's wheat. So if you come, if you're in Arizona, you can tell us about wheat fields. And also Garofa is a major brand that you can find it in uh, many countries. And now I found recently this pasta here, and this is very interesting. Pasta La Contessa. I don't know this brand. I didn't know this brand before. But when I read the small print, I found out that the protein is 15%, uh, which is the highest I found in recent years. This brand that I occasionally find here in supermarket, I know you can find it uh, in your country, it's called Armando, but they have, um, they make long pass their meal, the, the flour locally, and they use a um, sort of very good wheat they can try to find in Italy, buy it locally there. But they say that they have a kind of check about pesticide and glyphosate. So that means it is, they add another interesting point to the pasta. So anyway, this pasta is good. We had it many times and we like it very much. And now this is uh, another brand of pasta that uh, I also found uh, outside Italy. Uh, okay, I don't have the full packet because we use it for just an open packet. And this room is made in Campania regions, not far from Naples. And uh, lentil lavorazione, I suppose that uh, they mean uh, long drying time and the result is that this pasta has got a very good bite uh, it's actually particularly good it's, the taste is fantastic and now the pasta barilla it is the most uh, common pasta outside Italy. you can find it in most of markets in europe in us the normal packet of pasta normal pasta barilla has got uh, 25 percent protein content i don't find this is the best uh, past experience ever had. So it's okay, I mean, if I prefer other brands, the one that I've been showing you before. Uh, they also have uh, another line of pasta, bronze dye and better quality wheat. I can see from the packet it is 14%, uh, but uh, it comes out quite expensive because uh, um, for that amount of money, I can find very good pasta. I probably would spend even less. And now, cheaper um, pasta, you look at the small print here, this is supermarket pasta, the protein is 13%. And this packet of pasta, again, this is supermarket packet of pasta here, and the protein is 12.5%. And I must say, one day I was in the UK, I was shocked, I got some pasta from the supermarket, and I read the protein content, it was 7%. And they said, but this is not pasta, this is just eating carbohydrates, it's sugar. Anyway, for cheap pasta, terrible to eat, and uh, I didn't buy it again, of course. Above this level of pasta, there are small pasta manufacturers, and uh, it is called Pasta Artigianale, Artisan Pasta, and they are uh, terrific, but this small pasta, manufacturers uh, they're not uh, actually often available around the world you can find them in very specialized italian uh, uh, daily shops but with the pasta i just told you you already have a fantastic um uh, fantastic experience anyway another thing i have to say that uh, uh, dry pasta 
is not the industrial version of fresh pasta. It's they took completely different things. We always said the dry pasta. As I said before, you would dry the pasta in the seats before, and now you do in a sanitized environment. But dry pasta is the pasta we normally eat, and it goes with the, the majority of Italian uh, pasta recipes there. Then you have fresh pasta that is uh, developed in certain parts of Italy, and is made in a different way. There are so many different kinds of fresh pasta, but as I said, we got to have a video another time. So to sum up all the things about pasta, you need to get pasta that is with high protein content. That means 14% is good pasta. Uh, Trafilato al bronzo, that means uh, shaved with a bronze dye. Then uh, long drying time, it is very important. Another thing, uh, some people mention the color of pasta. If the pasta is kind of paler, it is better. If it is uh, um, yellow or brown, uh, it is not great. It is true to a certain extent. If it is too, too dark, mm, no, this has been, uh, I got a very short drying time. But I also find that the color of uh, the, the wheat and whey might, might affect this thing because we have here, it is um, cheap pasta, good. They don't say about drying time, and it is pretty pale. This one here, and this is the pasta di Gragnano. Uh, long drying time and looks uh, yellower. Okay, when you buy pasta, look at the packet and uh, take a few minutes to read the small print so you can uh, work out uh, the best pasta you can buy. A good quality pasta probably made is one of the most delicious things one can eat, at least in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed my video and uh, if you liked it, please put a like and uh, uh, if you're not subscribed, please press the button. And spread the word on uh, how to buy pasta. Ciao, ciao.